Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Uh, welcome to our nightly study on the Book of Acts. Bago po tayo magsimula, samahan niyo po ako sa isang maikling panalangin. Panginoong Jesus, maraming salamat po. Kayo po ang aming katagumpayan. Sa gabi pong ito, ang aming panalangin, panal ng Espiritu, samahan niyo kami, mangusap kayo sa amin. Ang inyong presensya ang manguna. Tumimo sa aming puso ang lahat ng mensahe na nais ninyo na marinig namin at matutunan. At magkaroon kami ng boldness and courage to just follow Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. So kagabi po, pinag-aralan po natin ang Acts chapter 6 verses 6 verses um, 8 to 15. And... Um, the study last night was all about the accusation that people uh, had on Stephen and they accused him of blasphemy against Moses, against the law, against God, and against the temple. Uh, kung babalikan po natin ang verses 13 to 14 of uh, chapter 6 from Tagalog Contemporary Bible, ang sabi po, Mayroon din silang pinapasok na ilang tao para tumistigo na kasindungalingan laban kay Stephen. Sinabi nila, ang taong ito ay palaging nagsasalita ng laban sa ating sagradong templo at kautusan ni Moises. Narinig namin, sinabi niya na ang ating templo ay gigibain ni Jesus na taga Nazareth at papalitan niya ang mga kaugali ang iniwan sa atin ni Moises. So, sa gabing ito po, pag-aaralan natin ang Acts chapter 7. And we will work on verses 1 to, to 50. Okay? Um, ito pong Acts chapter 7 is actually um, the, the sermon of, of Stephen. Uh, malaman po natin na ang audience po ni Stephen ay hindi mga uh, basta-bastang mga tao. They were learned people. Okay? So they were Pharisees, they were um, Sadducees. So sila po yung mga tao na alam po ang Old Testament. So um, the purpose of Peter giving again, okay, giving a panoramic view of the Old Testament from Abraham to Moses was not actually to educate them about the Old Testament, but to strike a point on certain um, truth that they have missed out about, about, about Jesus and the gift of salvation and about righteousness, okay? So, umpisan po natin. Hindi po natin babasahin ng lahat ng ito, lalaktaw-laktawan lang po natin. Um, umpisan po natin sa verses 2 to five ng Tagalog Contemporary, ang sabi dito, sumagot si Esteban, mga kapatid at mga magulang, pakinggan ninyo ako. Noong unang panahon, nagpakita ang makapangyarihang Diyos sa ating ninunong si Abraham noong siya ay nasa Mesopotamia pa, bago siya lumapit sa haran. Sinabi ng Diyos sa kanya, disanin mo ang iyong bansa, ang mga kamag-anak mo, at pumunta ka sa lugar na ipapakita ko sa iyo. Kaya umbali si Abraham sa bayan ng Kaldeyo at doon siya nanirahan sa Haran. Pagkamatay ng kanyang ama, pinapunta siya ng Diyos sa lugar na ito na tinitirahan natin ngayon. Noong panahong iyon, hindi pa binigay ng Diyos si Abraham ng kahit kapirasong lupa. Pero nangako ang Diyos na ang lugar na ito ay ibibigay niya kay Abraham at sa kanyang lahi. Wala pang anak si Abraham nang ipinangako ito ng Diyos sa kanya. Okay? Tapos po, laktawan po natin ng 6 to 7. Punta po tayo ng verse 8. So, again, from Tagalog Contemporary Bible, ang sabi, At bilang tanda ng kanyang pangako, nagutos ang Diyos kay Abraham na ang lahat ng lalaki ay dapat tuliin. Kaya nang isilang ang kanyang anak ni si Isaac, tinuli niya ito noong walong araw pa lang. Ganito rin ang ginawa ni Isaac sa kanyang anak na si Jacob. At ginawa rin ito ni Jacob sa kanyang da labing dalawang anak na siyang pinagmulan na nating mga Hudyo. So, uh, the 12 sons of Jacob refers to the 12 patriarchs. Ano po ang mapupulot natin from, from this? Ano po? Um, Umpisahan po natin uh, that Abraham had an encounter with God not in a particular place or structure. Hindi po, na, hindi po nag, nag, uh, nag, na, nakipag-usap ang Panginoon kay Abraham in a temple. So it is like a, a direct statement. Uh, it is a statement that Stephen is saying that God 
is not confined in a particular structure or in a particular place. And it was exemplified through the story of, of Abraham. And then po, ang sabi po, that Abraham, that God gave Abraham a promise. Po, nigyan siya ng pangako. At ang sabi sa verse 8, Bilang tanda ng kanyang pangako, nagutos ang Diyos kay Abraham na ang lahat ng lalaki dapat tuliin. This is what we call the um, covenant of circumcision. Ano po ba yung, yung covenant of circumcision na to? Ito yung pangako ng Panginoon kay Abraham na talagang tutuparin niya. When you say um, covenant, when God entered the covenant, He is bound to fulfill whatever promises He mentioned for that covenant. So, ano po yung pangako ng Panginoon? Sabi ng Panginoon sa Genesis 17 verses 4 to 7 ng Tagalog Contemporary Bible, Bible, sa ganang akin, ito ang kasunduan ko sa iyo. Magiging ama ka ng maraming bansa. Mula ngayon, hindi na Abraham ang itatawag sa iyo, kundi Abraham. Dahil gagawin kitang ama ng maraming bansa. Pararamihin ko ang lahi mo at magtatayo sila ng mga bansa. At ang iba sa kanila ay magiging hari. Tuto pa rin ko ang kasunduan ko sa iyo at sa mga lahi mo sa susunod mo pang mga henerasyon. Napatuloy akong magiging Diyos ninyo, ang kasunduan ito ay magpapatuloy magpakailanman. Um, nung binigay po ng Panginoon ang covenant na to kay Abraham, God gave this covenant to Abraham not because Abraham did something good. It is because of one reason, and that was because Abraham believed God. Nung pong binigay ng Panginoon ng pangakong ito, wala pang, he did not live to see the fulfillment of, of, of these promises. In fact, nung pumunta po siya sa promised land, wala po siyang pag-aari doon, at actually para lang siyang, para lang siyang nakitira sa isang piraso ng na lugar, sa isang sulok. This a land of promise. He did not see any any of these uh, promises of God fulfilled in his lifetime. But one good thing about Abraham is that he did not resolve to worshiping other gods. He continued his relationship with God even though he did not see the fulfillment of the promise because he believed that God will fulfill them. Praise God. And in explain po ito ni Pablo sa Book of Romans. Ang sabi po niya sa Romans 4, 1 to 3 ng New Living Translation. Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he wouldn't have had something to boast about. But what? But that was not God's way for the scripture Scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. So, naging matuwid si Abraham sa paningin ng Panginoon hindi dahil sa gawa kung hindi sa kanyang pananampalataya. Ngayon, dumako po tayo sa um, susunod na mga verses. Um, let's move on to verses 9 to 16. Ito pong verse 9 to 16, ito po yung patungkol naman kay Joseph. Um, Ito yung sa pangalawa sa bunsong anak ni, ni Jacob who was rejected by the 12 patriarchs because they were very jealous of Joseph. And so they sold Joseph to Egypt at nung nasa Egypt siya, uh, ang sabi doon, God was with Joseph and that Joseph, that was on verse 9. At naging governor siya and he was like the second rank from uh, second rank to the Pharaoh. So, isa, siya po yung pinaka-pangyarihan, pinaka-influential na, na tao sa Egypt, pangalawa sa Pharaoh. At dinalaw niya po ang mga, ang, ang 12 patriarchs and, and Jacob, his father, sa Egypt so that they will be saved from, from famine. So, um, Stephen presented this because Joseph, like Jesus, was a chosen savior and yet he was rejected by those people whom he saved. Okay. So dito na po nag-uumpisa yung yung uh, sinabi, katuparan ng sinabi ng Lord kay Abraham sa verses 6 to 7 which we skipped a while ago. Okay. Ano po ba yung uh, verse 6 to 7? Ang sabi po sa verse 6 to 7 ng Tagalog Contemporary Bible, 
Sinabi rin ng Diyos sa kanya, ang iyong mga lahi ay maninirahan sa ibang bansa at gagawin silang mga alipin doon at pagmamalupitan sila sa loob ng apat na raang na taon. Ngunit parurusahan ko ang bansang aalipin sa kanila. Pagkatapos, aalis sila sa bansang iyon at babalik sa lugar na ito at dito sila sasamba sa akin. So, ito pong ito pong succeeding verses na na pag-aaralan natin. Ito na po yung when uh, the Israelites began to multiply. So, I'm referring po from verse uh 17 ano, 17 down to 30 36 na tayo. So, uh the, the turnout of events were were, uh, were this. So, um, the Israelites began to multiply in number and then the Egyptians had a new king who was not really uh, aware or informed about uh, Joseph and, and the Israelites who were there. And so, he, he oppressed the Israelites. Okay? At dito rin po sa mga verse na to, nandun yung birth of Moses. Sabi po sa Acts 7.20, now, New Living Translation, at that time Moses was born a beautiful child in God's eyes. His parents cared for him at home for three months. Tinago po si, Joe, si Moses for three months kasi po mga panahon na yon, ang mga batang lalaki ay pinupugutan ng ulo. At after three months, um, ipinadaon sa laot si, si Moses at siya po ay napulot ng Pharaoh's daughter. And so the Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and took him as as her own and so Moses grew and learned in the wisdom of the Egyptians and then when he reached the age of 40 that was when um, he thought of visiting the Israelites his kings and and in in the time of his visit he saw an Egypt, Egyptian who was op oppressing an Israelite so pinagtanggol niya po itong Israelite na to and that uh, sa pagtatanggol niya ay napatay niya po itong Egyptian now, um, sa susunod na kanyang pag-visit sa kanyang mga kalagi, meron siya nakitang dalawang Israelites na nag-aaway and he tried to pacif pacify these two men who are on fight. And um, ang sabi po ng Acts 7, 27, 28 na New Living Translation, but the man in the wrong pushed Moses aside. Who made you a ruler and judge over us? He asked. Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? And so na nagulat si Moses, na realize niya na hindi pala sikreto yung ginawa niyang pagpatay. At natakot siya na baka ito ay malaman na, ng Pharaoh and, and he might suffer the consequence of it. And so he flee. Dumakas po siya ng, ng Egypt, umalis po siya and he landed in Midian and then he had a wife and had a two sons. Two sons. And 40 years after, so this at the time was like, Moses was like 80 years old, when the Lord spoke to him. Okay, so dito na po yung from verse 34 to 36, ang sabi, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groans and have come down to rescue them. Now go for I am sending you back to Egypt. So this Moses who was once rejected by his brethren is now was now being sent by God, okay, to be their rescuer. So God sent back the same man his people had previously rejected when they demanded, "Who made you a ruler and judge over us?" Through the angel who appeared to him in the burning bush, God sent Moses by, to be their ruler and savior. And by means of many wonders and miraculous signs, he led them out of Egypt through the Red Sea and through the wilderness for 40 years. So, um, babalikan po natin ang verse 7 na sabi that Moses was special in God's eyes because Moses was chosen to um to be Israel's deliverer from Egypt. At yun po yung sinabi ng Panginoon from verse 6 to 7 that um that um the the people the Israelites will be uh, oppressed but then the Lord will uh grant them a savior and will will grant them I uh, will will be able to will the Lord will deliver them from the oppression in po I sa verse uh, 7 to verse 6 okay 
So through Moses, God uh, demonstrated His power. He delivered the Israelites from Egypt. Sa, e sa Egypt pa lang po, nagpakita na po ng uh, mga signs and wonders ang Panginoon. And that through Moses, He also showed signs and wonders while they wander in, in the desert. So yun po ang kabuuan ng uh, ng pag-aaral natin ng book of Acts chapter 7 verses 1 to 36 where um, Stephen presented okay, the Old Testament from Abraham to Moses. And um, as he presented these, there are several key points po na that um, Stephen wanted to, to tell the his audience, the Jews. And these are God is not found in any temple or structure because um, he spoke to Abraham, he spoke to Moses, not in a given temple. And that, um, like Jesus, there were like uh, people that God sent to deliver Israelites from difficult situations. And these were uh, Joseph and Moses, whom the Israelites also rejected. Okay, so babalik na po tayo, balik po tayo sa uh, chapter 7, but this time we will study on verses 37 to 50. Umpisan po natin sa 37 to 41 ng NKJV. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us whom our fathers would not obey but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. So, um, balikan po natin that in, in the first, uh, and on verse 37, Moses prophesied about the coming of Jesus. Okay? So he prophesied about the coming of Jesus. Sabi dito, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. So Moses prophesied about Jesus and God's warning to Israelites that they should pay close attention on Jesus. Ito pong verse na to, um, Stephen mentioned about this. To, to tell the his audience at that time that Jesus was not just a sudden event. Na hindi lang siya basta sumulpot. Actually, he, his coming was even prophesied and it was even announced to the Jews in the Old Testament. Ano po? And sa verses po na to na binasa natin, makita natin, how Israelites, despite of the, um, of the demonstration of God's power, and, and kindness and faithfulness to them through Moses still had the nerve to reject Moses and disbelieve, okay, the faithfulness of God to deliver them from difficult situation. In fact, po, uh, sa verse, um, sa Exodus 32, uh, verse 36, chapter 32, verse 36 ng Tagalog Contemporary Bible, um, isinaad po dito kung papaano po sila nag-worship dito sa Golden Cow. Ang sabi po dito, kaya kinaumagahan, maagang bumangon ang mga tao at nag-alay ng mga handog na sinunog at handog para sa mabuting relasyon. Kumain sila at uminom at nilubos ang pagsasaya sa pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan. Ito pong nilubos ang pagsasaya sa ibang version ng sabi, mahalay silang nagkasiyahan. Okay. Um, what can we learn from this? Mahalay silang nagkasiyahan. This is not the kind of worship that is pleasing to God. Ano po? Makikita po natin dito that the kind of actions you do, your behaviors, your actuations, your beliefs, the way you think determines who your God is. Bitin ko po. Ang, ang, ang tao, ang Diyos na kanya sinasamba, ay ito, ito ay ang Diyos na nag i sa kanyang buong pag-iisip 
at sa kanyang buong pagkatao. That is why whoever receives Jesus is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new one has come. The ones who receive Jesus is given the grace to say no to sin. These people, hindi naman sila mga ulyanin siguro para hindi nila maalala ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanila from Egypt to the desert and they witnessed the, the parting of the Red Sea. Hindi nila nakalimutan yun. But why did they still reject Jesus? I mean God. Why did they still reject Moses whom God has sent as, as his representative? It is because they refused to embrace the kind of life that they would have if they will receive God in their lives. Ano po? So, sa panahon pong ito ngayon, likewise, um, yung mga audience po ni, ni Stephen, they were the same people who heard the preaching of Jesus. They were the same people who witnessed the miraculous signs and wonders Jesus performed while he was still on earth. But still, they rejected Jesus. Why? Because they forgot of what Jesus did. Because Jesus, um, um, it, was it because napatunayan na hindi totoo ang lahat ng mga ginawa ni, ni Jesus, ang lahat ng milagro niya, fake ba ito, mga magic ba ito? No. It's because they refused to embrace the life that they would have if they will receive Jesus in their lives. So, sa panahon po natin ngayon, um, we are also challenged. Would you like to uh, receive Jesus? Or you are one of those na gusto mo talagang i-reject ang Panginoon sa kabila ng lahat ng magagandang ginawa niya at pwede pa niyang gawin sa buhay mo simply because ayaw mong talikuran ang buhay na sa tingin mong masaya para sa iyo sa, kalusu, ka, sa, kalusu, ka, sa lukuyan. Now, let's move on to verses 42 to 43. Okay, so I'm reading from the Tagalog Contemporary Bible. Sa ginawa nilang iyon, tinalikuran sila ng Diyos at hinayaan na lang na sumbamba sa mga bituin sa langit. Ganito ang sinulat ng mga propeta. Kayong mga Israelita, naghandog kayo ng iba't ibang uri ng handog sa loob ng apat na pung taon doon sa disyerto. Ngunit hindi ako ang inyong pinaghandugan. Daladala pa ninyo ang toldan ng inyong Diyos-Diyosa na si Mole at ang bituwing imahen ng inyong Diyos-Diyosa si Refan. Ginawa ninyo ang mga iyon upang sambahin. Kaya itataboy ko kayo sa kabila pa ng Babylonia. God allowed them to be. Hinayahan ng Panginoon na gawin nila kung ano ang nais nila. Alam niyo ibig sabihin nito? The Lord left them. The presence of God left them. Alam niyo po, kung merong isang bagay na nakakatapat, ay yun yung mawala ang presensya ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. And so, when when these Israelites, when the presence of God was not with them, they encountered a lot of troubles. Why? Because God threw troubles on them? No. Because the presence of God actually is the presence of protection. So, nung umalis ang presensya ng Panginoon sa kanila, nawalan sila ng protection. Ang tao pala na sasamba sa iba, ibang klase ng Diyos o ang tao na magre-reject pala kay Jesus, aalisan pala sila ng presensya ng Panginoon. So, maaaring ang tanong sa atin ngayon, do you prefer to live in the presence of the Lord or are you still happy to live without the presence of God with you? Ngayon, balik na po tayo. Punta tayo ng verses 44 to 50 at ito na po yung katapusan natin. From Tagalog Contemporary Bible, sinabi pa ni Esteban, Nang naroon pa ang ating mga ninuno sa disyerto, may tolda sila kung saan naroon ang presensya ng Diyos. Ginawa ang tolda ayon sa utos ng Diyos kay Moises at sa planong ipinakita sa kanya. Nang namatay ang ating mga ninuno, ang kanilang mga anak naman ang nagdala sa tolda. Ang kanilang pinuno ay si uh, this is, I think, this is, uh, yeah, this is um, Joshua na pa sa kanila ang lupain na ipinangako ng Diyos matapos itaboy ng Diyos ang mga nakatira roon at nanatili roon ang tolda hanggang sa panahon ng ha ni Haring David. Hiniling ni David sa Diyos na pahintulutan siyang magpatayo ng bahay para sa Diyos para makasamba roon ang mga lahi ni Jacob pero hindi siya pinayagan kahit nalulugod ang Diyos sa kanya. Sa halik, si Solomon ang nagtayo ng templo ng Diyos. 
Verse 48, ito po, pakinggan po natin to. Pero ang kataas-taasang Diyos ay hindi tumitira sa mga bahay na gawa ng tao. Katulad ng sinabi ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng propeta, ang lahat ng aking trono, ang langit ang aking trono, sabi niya sa verse 49, at ang lupa ang tungtungan ng aking mga paa. Kaya anong uri ng bahay ang gagawin niyo para sa akin? Saan ba ang lugar na aking pagpapahingahan? Hindi ba't ako ang gumawa ng lahat ng bagay? Praise God. So, ma ma maitindihan po natin dito na God does not dwell in object or places made by men. Ang sabi po ng um, Acts chapter 17 verse 24 from Tagalog Contemporary, Siya ang lumikha ng mundo at ng lahat ng narito. Siya ang Panginoong nagmamayari ng langit at lupa, kaya hindi siya nakatira sa mga templo na ginawa ng mga tao. Dumako po tayo sa pagkatapos or sa conclusion ng ating pag-aaral ngayon. So from um, verses 1 to 50 of Acts chapter 7, ano po ang mapupulot natin dito? One, um, that we reject Jesus when we choose to be to embrace the life that is not pleasing to Him. Then, when we choose to to live the life na sa tingin natin maganda, hindi dahil ito ay naayon sa kabutihan at sa katotohanan, hindi naayon ito dahil sa nararamdaman nating saya at sigla sa paggawa nito, even though we know that doing this would cause us to be separated from, from, from God. And that... We reject Jesus when we seek other solutions rather than relying on, on Him. And lastly, we reject Jesus when we doubt or to refuse to receive His love and His gift of salvation. Um, sa ating po pag-aaral na to, na, na tutunan din po natin, that the presence of God is not found, the presence of God through the Holy Spirit is not found in buildings or structures. Okay? The pre because God, we, we can encounter God anywhere and any place because He is a God who is present everywhere. He is omnipresent. Hindi po siya yung tipo na ikaw bilang Kristiyano, paglinggo, mag-aayos ka kasi pupunta ka sa panambahan, sa worship service. Pagkatapos ng worship service, hubarin mo yung pagiging Kristiyano mo dahil wala ka na sa worship service at gagawin mo na naman yung lahat ng bagay na gusto mo kahit hindi ito ang tamang uh, uri ng, ng pamumuhay. The Lord honors the worship of those people with a contrite heart. Hindi po tumitingin ang Panginoon sa iyong actions sa pagsamba. Just like po yung mga uh, Israelites dati, no matter how much things they offer to God, they are all displeasing to God simply because their heart is not fully on God. Ang sabi po ng Salmo uh, Psalm 51.17 ng Tagalog Contemporary, ang handog na nakalulugod sa inyo ay pusong nagpapakumbaba at nagsisisi sa kanyang kasalanan. Ito ang handog na hindi ninyo tatanggihan. And uh, lastly po, God, ulitin ko, is not found in any structure. God is everywhere. And in fact po, ang sabi po ng book of, of Jeremiah 29, 13, which I cannot, I will not quote anymore, it says there that um, God is everywhere and is found by those who seek Him with all of their hearts. And lastly, I would like to emphasize that today, we are encouraged po to receive Jesus wholeheartedly. Let's receive Jesus. Let's embrace the life, the, the salvation, the gift of salvation that He has given us. It is for free. And in doing so, let us have the courage, ask the courage to just let go of this kind of life na hindi kaaya-aya sa Panginoon. Sapagkat ang pamumuhay ng nasa presensya ng Panginoon ay ang, ang pamumuhay na may kasiguraduhan ng magandang kinabukasan and everlasting life. So, dun po nagtatapos sa ating pag-aaral ngayong gabi. Um, samahan niyo po ulit kami bukas uh, sa pagpapatuloy ng ating pag-aaral on the Book of Acts. Um, chapter 7 and this time and tomorrow tonight, tomorrow night pag-uaralan po natin ang verses 51 to 60. 
So, sumahin niyo po ako sa isang uh, maikling panalangin. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa mensahe niyo sa araw na ito. Salamat po sa pagpapaalala niyo sa amin na kayo po ang Diyos na kailanman na hindi nagbabago. Kayo ang Diyos na kahit saan kami magpunta, mararanasan namin ang iyong presensya. Kung ang aming puso ay talagang sasaliksik sa inyo. Maraming salamat, Panginoong Heso Kristo, dahil kayo ay aming tagapagligtas. Salamat na sa kabila ng mga patuloy namin na pagtalikod sa inyo, hindi ka pa rin nagsasawa na ipaalala sa amin ang iyong pag-ibig at ibigay sa amin ang iyong handog na kaligtasan. Lord, I pray tonight that all of us will have the courage to just embrace you. To just embrace you and turn our backs to the old lives that are not pleasing to you. O oh God, I pray that all of us will have this commitment to live an uncompromised Christian life. Giving glory to your name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. So, ulitin ko po, nawa po, uh, makita na, magkita-kita ulit tayo bukas, same time, sa ating pag-aaral ng Book of Acts. Magandang gabi po and God bless you.